Today we're going through the entire process of tuning the batter head, the resonant head, and muffling a kick drum so that you can make your bass drum sound way more awesome than you thought possible. I'll be tuning a cheap kick as well as a high-end kick, so whatever methods I use today will definitely apply to whatever drum you have at home in your studio. Hey everybody, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer, the channel all about giving you the most important core drumming skills that actually help you to make music better and faster. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and check out the free e-guide below, five steps to learning any song by ear in under an hour without consulting any drum tabs or song tutorials on the internet. It's a powerful, predictable, and repeatable method that's definitely gonna help you, so go grab that. On with today's video. Something important here to keep in mind is that Tuning your drum lower doesn't necessarily increase the low end. And on the flip side, tuning your drum higher doesn't necessarily decrease the low end. The thing about drums is there's low end there all the time. You hit a snare drum, there's low end. You hit any tom, there's low end. You hit a cymbal, if you have a mic close to a cymbal, you're gonna pick up some low end frequencies from that cymbal. And so whether you have your kick drum tuned low or medium, you're gonna get a lot of low end. I guess if you tune it extremely high, you might start missing some low end, but there's still gonna be some there. And if you mic it up close, because of the proximity effect, if you've got a microphone close to something, it's always gonna pick up a lot of low end. And also the room, the mic setup, those can have a big effect on this as well. Depending on what room you're in, you might hear different frequencies from your kick. Depending on what mic you have in it or how many mics you're using and how it's positioned, that's gonna have an effect also. Basically what happens, I think a lot of times we feel like we're getting more low end from a drum when we put more muffling in it. But really that's just because the muffling is killing some of the overtones and if the muffling's killing the overtones then we're perceiving more of the fundamental, more of that lower note. When all the overtones are there it kind of distracts from that low note and it makes us notice it less and so we might still feel the low end but we don't really hear it as much. That's why the more you muffle a drum the more punch and just perceived low end it's going to have because you don't have as much of the high end distracting from it. And so I say all that to say you can have an unmuffled drum that's going to have just as much low end as a muffled drum. And actually, if you over muffle, you're probably gonna kill some of that low end. And even if you tune your drum a little bit higher for tone, you're still gonna have a lot of low end there because it's just the nature of a drum. There's gonna be low end, and if you mic it up, you're gonna be able to pull that low end out of it no matter what. All right, so we've got a 22 inch, pretty cheap low end drum here. I think it's mahogany juniper shells from what I remember back when I bought this. And then this is a 20 inch higher end drum, maple shells, and this is a really nice one, and it tends to sound really good right off the bat. This one also has a different kind of head on it. With this particular drum, I've had a lot more luck getting a great sound out of it with the Evans EMAD ring. Whereas with this drum, the Remo Power Stroke sounds really good. And so that might be a cheap versus expensive thing where this one just tends to sound better right off the bat. But the goal of this video is to show you how to make any kick drum sound really good. So that's why we're using two different ones here. You're probably gonna be able to relate to one of these. So of course, step one is to finger tighten. I like to roughly finger tighten first, just that gives us a good foundation, a good solid start to make sure that tension wise, we're actually in tune before we really even start listening. Depending on the, uh, the hardware on your drum, you may have to try a little harder to make sure that your, uh, your lugs here are lined up straight. With this drum, it can be a little bit tricky. And so I'm always eyeballing them just to make sure that they're straight and you know going perpendicular to the hoop as I start finger tightening. One thing I like about this cheap drum is that it's really easy to finger tighten it really quick. We're there. Uh, this one, you can't finger tighten like that, but that's okay because I have this tuning key drill bit that basically does the same thing because we have the same amount of torque as we would if we're finger tightening. And so we can just do that back and forth. That works really well. These lugs are already pretty well lined up. You can go in a star pattern if you want to be a stickler about that, but at this stage it really doesn't matter. All right, so it's pretty much finger tight. We'll do the same thing with this one because this can take us a little bit past the kind of finger tight we'd be at using just our fingers. So we'll do a round of this just to go a little bit more tight here. 
Okay. Honestly, both of these heads are totally flappy. And at this point, really, this is too loose. So let's go ahead and pull out the keys and just do a round of half turns, basically. That's gonna kind of get us in the ballpark of a good low batter head tuning. So this is a really good illustration of how every drum is totally different. This one is already getting a higher note. Boom, boom, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, this one, we've done the same kind of tuning. Mm -hmm. Well, actually it is a higher note, but the overall feel is actually lower. It feels like there's more low end coming from it, even though the note is higher. It's interesting, we've got different notes here, but they both feel like they're tuned just as low. So again, differences between drums, but at this point, I think we'd be ready to go ahead and put pedals on them and see how this sounds. But before we do that, let's get the resonant heads tuned up, at least finger tight also, and we'll start with that and we'll go from there. All right, so we're doing the exact same thing as before, making sure these are all lined up nice and straight as we start tightening. These can very easily get out of whack, and so that's why I always wanna be careful. All right, that's pretty close to finger tight-ish. We'll do the same thing with the drill bit, tuning key drill bit over here. All right, we'll call that finger tight. We'll do a round over here also. Yeah, I really can't even go much more. I got it pretty tight with just my fingers a minute ago. Yeah. So this is like flappy loose, but we could definitely see what this sounds like. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip these up. We'll put pedals on them and then we'll see, okay, what works, what's sounding good, what isn't sounding good. And we're also gonna slip some microphones into these just so we can hear a little more of what's happening low end wise. For consistency's sake, because I don't have two Beta 52s, but I do have two SM57s, we're gonna put the 57s inside, sitting on the towels, making sure that the towel really isn't touching either head. And I'm also gonna run the cable through the top through the hole in each drum so that we don't have any cable coming in contact with the head. So these two drums sound drastically different right now. We've got a lot more resonance coming from this one. Boom, boom, boom. There's kind of a, a, a note to it. Versus this one that's a lot more dead. And that's with basically the same level of muffling, if not more muffling on this one. So it's interesting that this one is still so dead, and I think it's because it's tuned so low. So we're gonna experiment some more with this. We're gonna tune things up a bit and see what happens. This one sounds cool in the room, but this one right now is actually more usable for recording. It's a more focused tone. This, we would need to add more muffling, honestly. So I mentioned a quick trick for changing the, the tone of your drum or even deadening it on the fly on a gig. Let's say we want to deaden this one a little bit because it's ringing a lot. First thing I'm going to try is detuning these two lugs right here. Totally loose. I don't like that.
Yeah, really the better solution is to detune the batter head. It all depends on where you've got your heads tuned. I've been in a lot of scenarios where I've got this head exactly where I want it, so I reach over, mess with a couple of those, fixed. Right now, because we have this one a little higher than that one, because the resonant head is just finger tight, really the better solution right now is to detune the batter head. So you just have to play with this. Obviously there's no one way to do all of this. There's no strict method for tuning a kick drum. It all depends on the drum. It all depends on where you're wanting to get things tuned. That's a little better. And we could push the towel against the batter head and that would deaden it out more. So that's a really good low tuning, a lot of low rumble there, which is cool. This one has just as much low end, but it's much more focused and a little bit more dead. So what we want to do now is play around with, okay, where's really the sweet spot with these drums? If we want low and beefy, this one's doing it very easily, basically finger tight. We didn't do anything fancy. We've got this head, front head pretty, that's pretty low, and then resonant head is very low. And if we want to get more tone and more resonance, we just start tuning higher. This one is a little bit different, so let's play around with it. I'm actually just going to start tuning both of these heads up. That's a really good sound right there. But I think we can go a little higher and maybe pull some more tone out of this one. Yeah, and I kind of like it about right there. And hey, I hope that this shows you some good evidence that you can get great sounds out of any kick drum, out of a 20 inch, a 22 inch, cheap, expensive. They're honestly just different. It's hard to say even which of these is better because they've got their different natural strengths and weaknesses. And this one's doing the rumble thing really well. And this one's doing a focused punch kind of thing really well. We'll see what happens if we tune the cheap one up a little bit more. That's probably going to bring that tone about again, focus the pitch a little bit more, and so we would actually want to insert more muffling if we were going to go with a higher tuning. We're still very loose on this side, so I'm actually going to continue to tune up this front head of this drum. There we go. We're getting a little more of a note out of it now. I really like the focus and the punch of a smaller kick drum. This one does really well with that. 
And this one's just a little bit more boomy. So if we wanna kill some of the boominess with this one, really what we have to do is push the towel up against that front head. That way it's being muffled down a bit more. And if we wanted to go further than that, we could stuff a pillow in there. So in case you haven't caught on to this point yet, when you're tuning drums, there's no hard and fast method. There's no one way to do it because when you've got drums that are so different, you have to take one approach to one drum, another approach to another. And this one would really need a lot more muffling to focus it. This one, you can have no muffling in it and it still feels very focused. And that has a lot to do with the heads too. This one has a, a coated head on the front that I cut a hole in, a uh, Remo Power Stroke. This one's got an Evans EMAD with a foam ring and then a resonant, a thinner head over here. This one does have a thinner resonant head, which is gonna give you more of that live boominess than this one. This one's actually gonna be a little bit deader because of that thicker coated head. And so all of those factors play into this. And so you find that based on your shell and your head combination, you've got certain strengths and certain weaknesses to work with. And as far as muffling goes, I think the perfect amount of muffling is a towel in the middle of the drum, just sitting on the shell, not touching either head. It's just enough to kind of soften things a little bit. And if you want actual muffling, you can push that up against the batter head and that'll take care of it. Or you could even tape a small cloth to either head and that can help a lot too. If you wanna go for the total deadness, you could literally just take off the resonant heads. This one's already fairly dead and we could go extremely dead if we took off the resonant head. This one would sound drastically different taking off that resonant head and we could then stuff some pillows against the batter head and that would give us that totally dead 70s sound. So it all depends on what kind of sound you want. Now before we finish, let's tune both drums up a little more and see what happens when we go higher. So I feel like with this 20 inch drum, we've actually hit a sweet spot here where when it gets a little higher, we start to get more tone. And so the drum has more of a note. That was something I mentioned earlier, you know, showing you how to get more of a note out of a drum. And sometimes the best way to do that is to actually tune a little bit higher. So instead of th that low end growl that we've got more of here, tune up a little bit so you have more of a distinct note with more tone. And believe it or not, you're not losing low end by doing that. That sounds really good. And so I really like this spot. You can go super low with this drum, but it doesn't have a lot of tone. It gets not flappy, but it just is very dead. But when we tune things up, we start to liven it up a little more and we hit this sweet spot where it's got a lot of warmth, tone, punch, and low end. So don't be afraid to tune your drum a little bit higher because that might be all you need to do to get it there. We'll see what happens though with this one if we tune this one up. I really like that. It gives us a distinct note. Um, with this one, the note is more controlled. It's almost like this drum is automatically set up to record really well. An engineer would love this sound right here and it's easy to work with. This one's a little more boomy, which feels great in the room. It's not gonna work so well mic'd up. It wouldn't work so well in a live situation, so we would have to muffle it some more. And again, talking about tricks to reduce the note, now that we've got the note, we'll say, okay, that's too much note. that quickly gets us where at least we've lessened it a little bit just by loosening these two lugs. We'll see what happens loosening these two. That helped a little bit. I'm noticing with these tunings, we're actually having more luck detuning these lugs instead of that one or these two right here. Really the best solution is just gonna to be to add a pillow in there and just kill it a little bit more. That way you've still got some of that warmth and tone, but just a shorter note length. That way it doesn't potentially start feeding back or at least feeling like it's feeding back through the PA. I really like where this one's at and I'd actually like to go even higher. I think once you start to get into that tone territory, it doesn't hurt to try going a little higher and see what you get. We now got an interesting hum here, making sure it's not coming from this drum. We do have some sympathetic resonance. That's pretty cool. I'm gonna go back down a tad bit on the batter head here, but leave the resonant head the same. That's pretty interesting. It's kind of like a nice little 
tone hum. Boom, boom. But I might decide later on, as I'm listening back to what the mic's picking up, that I don't like it so much. So I'm gonna go back down just a little bit to bring us back to where we had that nice amount of tone and punch without so much of that note. Yeah, I like that. And of course we can do the same thing with this drum where if we want it a little bit better, yeah, that instantly kills it a lot. I'm just going down with these two lugs. That brings it back in. So we've kind of got boomy, we've got more focused, but both of these, you can hear there, the strengths, uh, the pros, I wouldn't even say cons, it's just differences between them. And this one excels at some things, this one excels at other things. But of course, I'll let you guys decide which one you actually like more. But I'm guessing your kick drum at home relates to one of these. Either you've got a smaller drum like this one or a bigger drum like this one. Maybe your kick tends to be more boomy, maybe it tends to be more dead. Depending on what heads you've got on it, it might relate to one of these. And so I hope that at least what I've covered today kind of has helped guide you and just give you some thoughts because I know it might feel like I'm just throwing stuff at you, but the truth is when you're tuning drums like this, there's no one method because there's no one drum. There's a whole bunch of drums out there. And so one approach might work well with tuning this drum and I could tell you how to tune a kick drum based on this one, but what good is that when we have to think about different things with this one and think about a different method here? And we could bring in other kick drums and we'd have to approach it differently. And so you have to be willing to experiment but it all comes down to first, finger tightening, getting a solid foundation, making sure everything's in tune with itself. Start out with either no muffling or maybe just a towel. And then from there, you just gotta experiment. If you want more tone, more of a note, tune up. Don't be afraid to do that. You're not losing low end, you're just increasing tone and that's a good thing. You're getting more tone and punch. If you find you've got too much of that boominess or too much of that tone and punch, either increase the muffling, but maybe not too much, or just decrease the tuning on the batter head. Um, maybe on the resonant head, because that does work really well a lot of times too. I know today in this video, I've had more luck detuning these lugs on this side, but I've been in gig situations too where I'll reach over and detune these and that gives me the exact tone that I want. Use more muffling in a situation where you're working with an engineer. Engineers appreciate it because just a more focused, punchy tone works a lot better on their end. They don't like the big boominess. So right now if an engineer had to pick his favorite kick, definitely gonna be this one but I can make this one work I could either again tune things down deaden it a little bit uh, or take that head off take the resonant head off that would totally deaden it or stuff a pillow in there and problem solved so be flexible and be willing to do that in a gig scenario if the engineer does ask you to do that be ready to add more muffling or deaden things if that really helps all right so that's pretty much gonna do it if you have any questions if there's anything that I didn't explain or didn't explain well and you need more clarification feel free to shoot me an email I will happily help you out as best I can with this. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to go download my new e-guide below, five steps to learning any song in under an hour. It's a powerful, predictable, repeatable method that will help you go and learn any song by ear uh, and memorize it without having to consult any drum tabs or song tutorials on the internet. It's a big deal, so go check it out so you can really accelerate your song learning and be able to learn a whole bunch of songs and retain them. I hope you've enjoyed the series on tuning. This is the fourth video. It concludes the series. We've gone through each main drum. And so if you haven't seen the previous ones, go check out the first one where we talk about snare tuning and then rack tuning and floor tom tuning. Uh, so check out all of the series. The links are in the description below. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Where did my mic go? Oh. I don't know when that came off.